Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel. I'm really glad you're here. Today I am talking Disney Vacation Club. How we use our points, when are we next using our points, and how do I keep all of that straight? And I'm really glad that you're here. So first of all, I wanted to get this video done before we kind of got into the craziness of the holidays. And uh, my set backdrop is kind of in transition right now. So I was like, oh, I, I need to throw something Disney. So Minnie and Kermit are joining me today and I am wearing my Disney Vacation Club sweatshirt. And a lot of you have reached out and asked me, Jen, you just bought that second Disney Vacation Club contract at Old Key West and yet you're still not going to Disney. What are you going to do? with all those points. So first of all, great question. Second of all, if you've somehow clicked on this video and you have no idea what Disney Vacation Club even is, it is Disney's timeshare and I talk about it a lot in videos. I also talk about all kinds of other Disney content here. So if you like this and you are, you know, intrigued by what you see, please hit the subscribe button. Please hit those bell notifications because I would really love to have you here. Okay. So before I even start talking, and I think I've already said before I even start talking, my brain feels a bit like it's filled with scrambled eggs. Um, I put on this sweatshirt and I noticed, I don't know if you guys can see, there is a bleach stain on my sweatshirt. It's clean, but there is bleach got on it. I must have been, I don't know, in between doing 50 different things and, and bleached my, my favorite Disney Vacation Club sweatshirt. So I wasn't gonna mention it, but you know, in case you see it, you're like, is that bleach on her sweatshirt? Yes. The events in our world over the last couple of weeks have my brain just, just gone. Like I'm having trouble <laughs> putting together a coherent sentence and I almost didn't film today, but this is a video that I've been meaning to get out and I was finally like, you know what? If, if they want someone that's always super polished and says everything perfectly, I'm probably not the channel for you anyway. So best that if you're new, you just get to know the real me from the very beginning. So, hey, <laughs> I'm a deeply flawed human being who loves Disney and likes to talk about it. There, out of the way. Now we can really get down to business. All right, so y'all know I've not been to Disney since February. Okay, so the princess uh, trip was my last Disney trip, which now saying that out loud, as someone who went to Disney like every six weeks for the entire like last two or three years, that's cuckoo. But as we know, the great unpleasantness is not only not going anywhere really quickly, it's actually right now the worst it's been this entire time. So I sure as heck am not going right now. And I know a lot of you knew that I had scheduled a trip in December. I have canceled that. I had kept scheduled a trip in January. I have canceled that. I have zero intentions to go to Disney. I am not scheduled to go to Disney. It is just not something that I am comfortable doing for a variety of reasons. Everyone has their own opinions, um, but I am holding off. I am certainly not traveling right now as we're having this huge spike. Um, I know my friends in the UK, I'm thinking about you guys because you just went into your second lockdown. Like it would be ridiculous to sit here and pretend that that isn't going on because obviously it is. Um, and there are many of you that are going to Disney and you tell me all day long how safe it is. And I so appreciate the fact that Disney is doing everything that they can, but I just don't need to go right now. And so therefore I just don't, I, I just don't feel the need to go. So we did have a lot of points that came in with our new contract, but the good thing about the resale contract that we bought, and if you're interested, I did a whole series about that process, and I'll put a link to that right here. Uh, we did get a great deal on an, a new Old Key West contract. We also have another Old Key West contract that we purchased direct from Disney, because you can do that even though it's an older resort. I think with incentives, it's currently selling at $165 a point direct from Disney. And then you have the 2057 expiration year. If you buy on the resale market, unless you buy a 2057 contract, you're going to have a 2042. I just lost a whole bunch of you, but those of you that know, if you know, you know, and if you don't know, go look at my other videos. <laughs> Boy, this is going well. Okay. So here's what happened. I kept canceling trips. 
Disney, as you may or may not know, is currently putting points back into the use year from which they were borrowed. So I had borrowed a whole bunch of uh, 2021 uh, points for my 2020 use year, which starts in December for our January trip, which has since been canceled. Um, they put all of those points back in the 2021 use year. So that is fantastic. The new contract that we bought was stripped of all but 30 points. And I just used those um, on my trip that I went to um, Hilton Head Island. So I don't have any points that are expiring anytime soon. In fact, I don't have any new points coming until January of 2021, okay? So I think I have 12 points left in my 2020 use year that starting December 1st, I'll have the ability to bank. I plan on banking those points into 2021. So I'll have the 220 plus the 12 that I'm banking. And in the process of chatting with somebody on Instagram about this, it was someone who was in the middle of a resale contract. She was like, I do not understand this whole banking thing. I don't get when I can do it. And actually she um, corrected me and she was 100% right. I had been giving some bad information because I think I said it was six months or seven months, but um, it's actually, is it eight months? I have the chart right in front of me, hold please. Um, so I'm gonna tell you, depending on when your use year is for your contract, when you can bank your points. So if you have a February use year, you have until September 30th to bank your points and you can bank 100% of your points, meaning you're not gonna use them this year and you want to move them to next year. March use year is October 31st, April's November 30th, June is January 31st, August is March 31st, September is April 30th, October is May 31st, and my use year, which is December, is July 31st. So technically, those 12 points that are hanging out, I have until July to bank those points, but I would rather just bank them uh, because we are planning on, please Lord, a big family trip January of 2020. Two, okay, so a year from January. Um, that's gonna give us a ton of points to use. It'll give us like 232 points, and then we can even borrow from uh, 2022's uh, use year if we want. Uh, but I don't, I don't see that being necessary. We should be able to just let those stay where they are and everything is good. Now, will I go to Disney prior to January of 2022? Yeah, I probably will. Um, but we've just decided that it's better to wait and save our points since they don't expire. That way, since the situation is kind of fluid, if I make a cash reservation and I end up canceling it, I just like the flexibility of that. Um, and yes, we are, um, you know, I'm super lucky that that's something that we can even do because a lot of families that would not even be an option. Um, obviously, I won't be staying in as nice of an accommodation. Um, you know, how much I love my old Key West, I'll probably be staying at a moderate or a value or maybe even staying off property. Uh, but we just wanted to wait to use our points until we were sure that we kind of had the all clear. Uh, you know, we're excited about the possibility of a vaccine. We're feeling very positive that we are closer to being out of this than we are into it. But Scott and I really feel we still have quite a few months ahead of us before we're really going to feel comfortable traveling for leisure, if that makes sense. So when you're in a position where you're not gonna use your points, you have several different options. You can bank them with DVC, as I just explained. Um, of course, you can use them at a non-Orlando uh, property. You could use them at Vero Beach. You could use them at Alani, which just opened back up. You could use them at Hilton Head. Some people, if you're like me, I feel a lot more comfortable going to a Disney resort that's away from a park uh, because I, I just do. There's not the concentration of crowds and I can tell you 100% that that is what I experienced at Hilton Head. And if you haven't watched those trip vlogs yet, they are up. I was so happy with that trip. And I do have one more video that will go up um, where I'm answering some questions and talking about tips and tricks for Hilton Head Island and all those things. So of course you can use them at a you know non-Orlando destination. Um, you can also use them with uh, another timeshare exchange with RCI and then I think one other company. I have zero experience with this. 
So I don't even really like to talk about it because I really wouldn't know even what I was doing. I have heard that for the most part, the RCI properties are not on par with Disney properties and you have to be very, very careful. I know some of you have said you've had good experiences. If in fact you have had a good experience, if you would put that in the comments, I think that might help other people. But I believe, and again, I'm not an expert on this because I've never really looked into it, but I believe if you call member services, those points can be moved into like a holding to use for RCI for up to two years. So that kind of resets the clock on your points. And I know for a lot of you, if you have expiring points, um, that might be really, really helpful. And then, you know, lastly, the thing you could do with them is they could just expire. Um, I mean, you could rent them out technically through a third party. Right now, I would not recommend that because I know that the third party, like David's Vacation Club and DVC Rental Store, they are flooded with points. I'm not even sure that they would take that right now or that they're doing that. So if you know, if you would tell me in the comments, because I'm really curious if they're even accepting, um, you know, people to, to sign on with them to, to have someone rent their points. Um, I completely lost my train of thought. What were we talking about? Let's see. <laughs> This is starting to feel like one of my live streams, isn't it? That's okay, because we are gonna get through this video. Um, so you can bank them with RCI for two years. Um, oh, you could rent them, that's what I was saying, because I know someone will say, you know, you could always rent them out. Normally that's true, not sure that's true right now. And then the last thing that could happen to them, which, hear me, this is not what anyone wants, is they just go away. Now. The, the sad part about that is it is a waste, obviously, because that's a whole year's of points, a whole year's worth of points that you just can't use that you pay dues on. The upside is it, it really is not like the end of the world, especially when you look at how many people planned so many expensive vacations. If they didn't have travel insurance, a lot of people lost a lot of money. I'm hoping that is not your situation, but over the years I have had at uh, times when, you know, a few points I just wasn't able to use and they just expired and that was the end of it. And it, it you, you really wanna avoid that happening. You wanna plan things out as far in advance as you can. Um, and I'm gonna get to that in just a second, how I do that. Uh, and you really wanna be as, as kind of proactive on that as you can because you don't want that to happen because it is a waste, but it's also, not the end of the world. You still have points coming the following year. You still have another trip that you can plan. And, you know, that's been one thing in the midst of all of this. It's perspective giving, right? Because you're like, okay, you know what? I'll live. I'm not happy, but, but we will move on with our lives. So I always am planned out two years in advance with my DVC points. And here's why. I like to be able to plan out. For instance, if I know that we wanna stay in a grand villa, I know we need to skip a year in order to make that happen. Or if I know that I wanna borrow points, I wanna make sure that I have my expectations set correctly so that I, I can take enough points from there and understand that then that leapfrog year, I'm not gonna be able to do either as long of a trip or maybe stay in as large an accommodation. We really like to stay in two bedroom villas. Um, that is where our family is most comfortable. We're a family of five with three young adult sons. And um, it just, yeah, it just works out better that way. So we have really landed that our kind of favorite uh, time to go to Disney is the second week of January. Um, if Marathon Weekend ever comes back again, that's a time when a lot of my friends are down there. So what we kind of like to do is arrive Marathon Weekend and then stay that whole next week. Interestingly, and this just occurred to me, I, you know, my, my twins are getting ready to be done with college. By the time that 2022 vacation rolls around, it will be their senior year, which is mind blowing to me. So I do recognize that they are going to have jobs and careers and they may not even be able to go. And we've just sort of settled in, into this place where I'm like, I'm totally comfortable with that because I still like going the second week of January. Crowds are tend to be lower, although you never know. Uh, marathon weekend does tend to be a little crowded, but the runners are usually so tired and doing other things. It's, it's really kind of a non-issue. The only thing about marathon weekend is the transportation on the mornings of the races. You have to just be aware and pack your patients for that situation, especially the mornings of the half marathon and the marathon because traffic is cuckoo bananas and 
If I were you and I were going over Marathon Weekend in January, if Lord willing, all of those things eventually come back, um, I wouldn't even try to go anywhere on those mornings. I would use those as like resort mornings. Um, you know, if you don't plan on running or cheering for someone in the race. Yes, we are all over the place today. <laughs> How many Disney topics can I cover in a short period of time? So um, we're just gonna go the second week of January. And what I've told my kids, and, and that's one of the things a lot of you reach out and ask me too, is, you know, what do you do with your grown kids in the DVC points and they have their lives and you're planning so far in advance? And I'm like, meh, your mother and your father will be at Disney the second week of January for a week, uh, you know, once, not this year. <laughs> the next year and hopefully for you know until the year 2042 and then from 2042 to 2057 we're gonna have to scale back a little bit i don't know we'll be in a one bedroom i i i, I don't know i don't know point being that helps me just calm down about the whole thing and i have to admit one of the things that always kind of annoys me about disney vacation club is the fact that you can't just pick up the phone and make a reservation and be done with it it's complicated and there you have to work things out and you have to schedule things a certain way knowing that we're just going to go the second week of january no matter what i can book that at 11 months out at old key west which is our home resort which is what we love anyway if at the seven month mark, we get in someplace else we've wanted to try, great. If we can't, totally fine. In fact, um, I miss old Key West so much at this point, I don't even think I'm gonna try anything at the seven month mark. So what will happen is, let's see, this is November. In February, on February, whatever that date is, that is my 11 month mark, I will go on to the DVC member website. I will book our, our week long vacation in a two bedroom. That's another reason I go in January. The point requirements are very low for Old Key West. Well, really for everything. Once you get past the holiday season, it's a good time. If you're cheap like me, it's a good time. <laughs> I like to get I like to squeeze every last bit of vacation out of those points. Um, so we'll schedule our trip. We will be have it on the calendar. And don't we all just feel better when we have a Disney trip on our calendar? I know I do. Like I have it in my planner. I am counting the days and I cannot wait until I can schedule that vacation. Now, here is when it is very much to my advantage if I'm always going to vacation the second week in January that I have a December use year. Because again, this is another question that always comes up. Why does use year ma matter? If you vacation all different times of the year, it totally doesn't. If you have a time of year that you always vacation, it really does. And let's walk through that scenario. Um, for example, what happened this year? Scheduled for January. Uh, now let's say that Disney had not put those points back into 2021, which is a very unusual circumstance that is only for right now because of the great unpleasantness, okay? So if we had canceled our vacation for January and they were December points, I now have until July to decide if I want to use those points or bank those points, okay? So it gives me the optimum amount of time, even if I should have to cancel relatively last minute, um, it gives me the most amount of time to figure out a way to use those points or if I can't use them, to bank them, okay? So that they can all move. And although Disney does have a borrowing restriction right now where you can only borrow 50% of your points from a future use year, you can absolutely bank 100% of your points. So for us having a December use year and taking January vacations, perfect because I have the most amount of flexibility. Should we decide to reschedule at the last minute? Not the end of the world. I have plenty of time to decide if I want to take a different vacation in that year or if I want to move those points to the following year and maybe take a bigger vacation, maybe take a few vacations. The possibilities are endless. And you know, as news is coming out of Disney, um, especially I think everybody is pinning a lot of hopes on certain things that are happening and we're finally starting to see I think some light at the end of the tunnel, even though I know it feels really dark right now, especially if you're in one of the um, states here in the US where the numbers are just astronomically high right now. Uh, but I am starting to feel like 
I will feel comfortable going back to the park soon. They will be bringing back, um, you know, the nighttime entertainment and the fireworks and the live entertainment and all of those things that we love about Disney. And I feel really, really good that January of 2022, the LaForge family is gonna be able to take a fantastic Disney vacation. And yeah, I can't wait. I hope I end up going sooner, but if I don't, that's okay too. And my points are taken care of and I'm not stressed about that. And uh, yeah, it's all good. One last piece of Disney Vacation Club news. And if y'all want me to talk about this in a separate video, you need to let me know. It's one of those things I don't talk about a lot because it's just like, death and taxes, these are inevitabilities, but annual dues just came out. So if you're a member and you haven't checked, go see if your resort went up, it probably did. Mine went up, I think 6%. Um, I think the highest increase I saw for annual dues was Hilton Head Island and that was 9%. Um, my increase at Old Key West was a lot higher than I expected, but then I remembered the refurbishment so when we pay our dues, it's just like, you know, a homeowner's association fee. When they have construction, when they have a hurricane, when they have to do refurbishments, um, that money has to come from somewhere. So there is an actual, you can find somewhere from the dues association meetings and it, or the condo association meetings, and it will tell you exactly where that money is going from the um, increase in dues that you're paying. So if you're thinking of buying DVC, um, it's always good to remember that those dues can and will go up and we've owned different contracts now since 2012 and every year except for one um, our dues have gone up some years only like two percent and then i think our highest jump was 11 percent one year so it can and does happen something you need to be aware of and yeah we just kind of accept it mine comes out automatically it's a monthly payment so that monthly payment is is not huge so i don't really think about it if i were paying it all in one lump sum though I might be having a little bit of sticker shock right now. All right, that's all I have to talk about. I feel like this video was super, super nerdy as far as very specifics with a lot of numbers about DVC. And I know that that is not everybody's cup of tea. So there's a whole bunch of other videos on here that are, you know, trip vlogs and, and you know, unboxings and a lot more kind of, um, I guess, fanciful than talking about the nuts and bolts of your actual points when you're planning a DVC trip. But I feel like these videos are helpful as well because just to hear how other members are are banking, borrowing, and being creative with their points um, during this time of great unpleasantness is entertaining to me. So maybe it's entertaining to you too. Thanks so much for being here. Again, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please make sure you do so. Uh, we are rounding the corner to 20,000. We're, we're, we're still, it's, it's kind of like, 20,000 seemed completely impossible to me when I started, like impossible, impossible. So now that I can kind of see it, like maybe not on this hill, but on the next hill over and, and it's kind of poking its head up, I, I, I'm getting pretty excited. So I would love to see that happen sometime in the next six months. And you could say that you were part of that process. So why not? It's free. Thank you. Have a good day. Whatever you're doing, please make sure you're being really good to each other. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.